Praise the Lord and good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Friday. We made it. We made it to Friday. We made it to the day where we're going to gather, where we're going to have this encounter with the Lord. I am so excited about the outpouring on tonight. I am excited about what God is going to do. Listen, if you have not already, I need you to share. I need you to tag. I need you to get this word out this morning help me to evangelize good morning prophet woodson good morning miss dawkins good morning jackie sheila yvette james good morning to the people of god his chosen remnant i am excited about what god is going to share with us on this morning i am excited about everything that god is doing in your life right now i am just excited listen because god is getting ready to move in a supernatural way on tonight listen he already gave us the word the prophetic word for tonight the prophetic word for tonight is new n-e-w new 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 he's gonna pour out new hearts he's gonna pour out new minds listen and, and god already gave me instructions because you all know i got up um an hour before before here so i was up at about four um before the lord praying and receiving from him this morning. And he gave me this word. He said, tell them that I'm going to pour out new hearts. I'm going to pour out new mind, new mindset. Remember your mind about to be renewed. We've been teaching on this all week. He said, but the thing what I need them to understand is when you are made new, it is not your job to go and explain to anyone what happened. He, remember on yesterday, we were reading the text and it said once they receive this new mindset, once they got a renewed mind, that the, their former, 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 that means past associates said that they didn't even look the same. And remember, God is going to anoint your spiritual eyes. We talked about that on yesterday. God, when he anoints your spiritual eyes, your discernment come open and you see things for what they really are. God is telling me already to tell you, you're going to have to receive what he showed you. Oh, Lordy, you're going to have to receive what he showed you, what he revealed, because you're going to have new sight. So you're going to see things different. People are going to say you look different. And absolutely you do. People, I can already hear it. You changed. Absolutely. I did change. Because on 623, I got a new heart. On 623, I got a new mind. I don't think the same. I don't see the same. My heart don't, don't, don't move the same way it did. I have the heart and mind of God now. Listen, so I am excited about what God is going to do on tonight. So this morning, oh, and also I want to share with you all about worship and warfare, worship and warfare, because this is our last gathering before worship and warfare on August 11th. I need you because God gave me this. If you have children, watch this. If you have children that are in the public school system, I need to lay hands on them. If you work out on in the public school system, I need to lay hands on you. <clears throat> watch this. Because when I was in my prayer, maybe about 10 minutes ago, God dropped this in my spirit heavy. Something is about to hit the public school systems. Something is about to hit. I'm going to say it again. The public school systems. Your kids need to be covered. You need to be covered from the. OK, listen. From the higher ups, from the government, something is about to be released in the school system that is going to affect teachers and it's going to affect children. And I'm telling you, you got to be covered. Your children got to be covered. I'm telling you, something is coming. But if you cover it, no, Psalm 91, no harm shall come nigh thee. And my heart began to weep. So I said, okay, God, so this is not good. This is, he said, no, daughter, it's not good. He said, so I know you. He said, I know worship and warfare. He said, I know it's more the adults getting it in and getting their breakthrough. He said, but the kids this year, he said, them babies that, that's going in the public school, public school system, CMS, I work for them. So I know. He said, is something coming down the pipes? He said, your baby's got to be covered because if they are not covered, their mind is going to get hit. OK, teachers, if you're not covered, your mind is going to get hit. And watch this. When the teacher's not right, I'm going to tell you, when I'm having a bad day, it can transfer over to my kids. When I tell you, a I'm going to tell you how much impact a teacher has. A teacher has so much impact on a student that your kid, uh, as a teacher, I'm telling you, my kids take on my personality. The same attitude I have, my class had the same attitude. Listen, so we have to, as educators, we got to be covered this year as never before. Is some stuff coming through the pipes? 
I'm telling you, and it's not good. It's some stuff coming through the pipes. Well, they gonna call, listen to this. They gonna call right wrong and wrong right. We got to be covered. So I just wanna share that this morning and tell you how important it is for your children, for your children to attend worship and warfare. Of course, they already, many of them already do because they know that it's in August, so I'm gonna cover the kids. But it, but it's, it's, it's detrimental this year. They got to be there. So let's get into day five. We are on day five of our prayer and consecration. We know that tonight is the night that God is going to do an outpouring. We're going to receive the new heart, the new mind, the new sight. But today, so our scripture for this week has been Luke 4, verses 14 through 22. Luke 4, 14 through 22. It says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place. Listen, he found the place where it is written. This is Isaiah 61, one through two. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. And today we're dealing with to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Oh, my God. Those who are oppressed. And tonight I'm going to deal with to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began saying to them today. This scripture, listen, today, this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing. All of them spoke well of him and they were amazed at how gracious his words were. And then they said, isn't this Joseph's son? They rejected what he just said. We've been dealing with rejection all week. Watch this. They rejected what he said. Remember, and I, I'm just going to give a quick overview because some people, this is their first time um, hearing this word. So Jesus is, is returning. Watch this. Jesus has just went through his battle with Satan, where Satan was telling him, cast yourself down. Look at all the world. I give you this and I'll do that. And Jesus told Satan, um, man doesn't live, man doesn't live. Um, I can't even remember the scripture now, but Satan was tempting Jesus and Jesus, Jesus overcame the temptation, right? And so Jesus after he did all that, and it says he came back full of power, full of the Holy Ghost. And the first place he went was Galilee. In Galilee, we already learned that there were millions of people there. So while he's in Galilee, he, he is, he's teaching and he's doing all these things. And everybody's talking about how powerful Jesus is. Then Jesus says, now I'm going to go back home. Listen, thank you, Maureen. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy gosh, because you know my mind be like way ahead of me. Listen, so... So Jesus says, I'm going back. He says, I'm going back home to where I was born because I want them to be. I'm going back to Nazareth where I was born because I want them to be first partakers of what God sent me back to do. He says, I'm going back home. He says, because I want my people. Watch this. He said, he said, I want my people to, to, um, to, to be. I, I want to heal their broken hearts. I want to preach the gospel to the poor. I want to set them free that are in bondage. I want to give them sight so they can see spiritually. He says, and I want to give freedom to those who are oppressed. And I'm going to proclaim to them that this is the year of the Lord. The year of the Lord, I mean, this is you. I'm going to deal with Jubilee tonight. Watch this. So Jesus told them all this. And he's telling them, he says, you know what I, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about? I'm him. I'm your boy. I came back to set y'all free. Y'all know me. Y'all my people. And they said, yeah, that's Joseph's son. He's the carpenter's son. Did, ain't he the one that fixed this in my house? Ain't he one that helped me? They, they, they looked over the whole fact that this man has came back full of power. The one y'all read about. Listen, the one that y'all read about, he came back to set you free. He came back to get you free from everything you're going through. Your answer is standing here. And all you got to say is, ain't that Joseph's son? Who went home and was rejected. Ooh, Jesus. Listen, so it goes on to say, we dealt with all the things that he that he came to do. Um, we dealt with um, he coming to preach the gospel to the poor, him coming to heal the brokenhearted, him coming to um, set those that are bound up free. He came to deliver. He came to give you sight so you can see spiritually, so you can discern. And then it says he came to set those who are oppressed free. What does oppression mean? Oh, my God. Help me, Holy Ghost. What does oppression mean? 
drop that in the chat. Oppression, oppression, oppression. Oppression is the same thing. Listen to this as those that are abused, those that are distressed. That means you stressed out. You, you oppressed. Those that are stressed out. It says those are those who are enslaved. You in bondage. Oh God. He said. He said I came. He said I came. To set you free. He said, I know y'all stressed out about the situation. I know you stressed about the finances. I know you stressed out about the kings. I know you stressed out about the rulers. I know you do it sound like us. I know you stressed out about your family. I know you stressed about all these different things. But I came. Will Jesus help me? He said, but I came. Listen, listen, listen. He said, I came and I'm going to set you free. He said, I, I am the answer. Oh, Jesus. I am the answer. Yeah, but ain't you Joseph's son? Listen. But when you get too familiar with the voice of God, whoever God is using to give you his word, whoever that, that prophet is in your life, when you get too familiar, you'll overlook them. And I'm going to say, oh, Jesus, even your kids. Mm, God, listen, because my all four of my daughters walk heavy in the prophetic. And I love the fact that they flow just like me. They don't say God told me to tell you. They just start talking. I'm looking like, huh, okay. I know that's from God because you, you don't even know what I'm doing. I remember a day when Whitney walked in the house. Watch this. She had been at school all day. And, and a close friend of my family had passed that we all knew. And, and so I was sitting there. And when Whitney walked in the door, she looked at me. She said, hey, ma. I said, hey, Whit. She said, when you going up there for the funeral? I looked at her. I said, what you say? She said, when you going up there for the funeral? I said, you know what? I said, because this child, and I just, I just answered her because I said, she don't even understand. Watch this. There have been times, watch this. When I was looking for a house, I'm gonna and because what, what happens is because they are kids, I raised you, we get too familiar and we miss what God is saying. Watch this. I was looking for a house. This is like not the house I'm in now, but I was living in Rock Hill. I was in an apartment and we had drove up, watch this, to Gastonia, rode through a neighborhood and I was looking at houses to rent. Me and Brittany just in the car driving, singing, having a good time. And I said, oh, Brittany, look at this house. And we went in, looked at the house. The house was the house was beautiful. And I said, yeah, the rent ain't too much. I can afford that. Brittany said, yeah, it is nice. I said, you like it? She said, yes, ma'am. She said, but Ma, can I tell you something? I said, go ahead. She said, why would you be renting when God would want you to buy? Woo. She said, Ma, why would God? She said, why would God take you from being a homeowner one time and you rent because out of your obedience, you moved, you left what was you left that place and you rented. Why would God turn around and make you rent again? She said, that's not that's not like God. And I looked, I said, Brit, you right. You right. Do you know? She and then she began to say, Mama, God going to give you a house. She said, God is going to literally give you a house. Do Y'all know how the story happened. My, my daddy was in hospice. My realtor happened to call me because watch as soon as she spoke, I heard it. I heard it with my spiritual ears. I said, oh, this baby prophesying. And, and it really kind of convicted me because instead of me, go, oh, 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 uh oh, oh, instead of me going what my flesh was saying, you can afford. Mm. I was going what my flesh said I could afford. I had not really prayed about it. I was just saying, this is my next move because I'm tired of renting. Yeah, but you're going to get a house and you're going to rent again. Make it make sense. So then I listened to her because I heard the Lord through her. And I said, okay, my daddy was in hospice. Do you know my realtor called me and they get, and she told me, she said, if you can just get down here now and look at this house, it's in Gastonia. Y'all ain't going to believe this. The house was in the same neighborhood. New construction. Because watch this. New construction. Watch this. I ain't even drive around the corner to see the new houses. I was over there looking at a rental property. I ain't even, nothing in me said, drive around the corner and go look at the house, the houses that they built it. My re the realtor called me. She said, go look at this house. It's in Gastonia. I said, Gastonia. And I, my spirit was like, wait a minute. This is God. Went to, went to that same neighborhood around the corner. Brand new house. Built like I wanted it. From the ground up. The Wendy, here we go. Brand new house. Built from the ground up. Just sitting there where the people who had the house built just decided I don't want it. They pulled out. The realtor says, so what we're going to do is we're not going to put it back on the market. If you want it, watch this. If you want it, give me, Tracy, no, I had to pitch it up on the refrigerator. Listen, she said, if you want the house, just get, just write a check for $500. You know, they don't need to do the $500 no more. She said, write the check for $500. I wrote the check for $500. Watch this. End up getting the house. They ended up giving me some money back when I went to close. Every time I get a house, I end up walking away with money. It's a God thing. 
So they end up giving me money back. And God began to tell me, he said, when you be obedient to my voice, he said, I don't care who I send it through. You better listen. So I'm telling y'all this morning, y'all have birthed, pro okay. Y'all have birthed prophets in your house and you are too familiar and you missing what God is saying through your children. You gotta open, you gotta open up your spiritual ears and hear what they saying. You gotta, open. I remember at one point I would tell my daughters, now tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Oh God, tell me because out of the mouth of bait. Okay, let me get back to this. <laughs> they rejected Jesus because they were too familiar with him. Oppression. He says today, we came, he came to deal with oppression. Oppression is the same thing as being abused. That means treated wrong. And Kiara, you know you got a prophet in your house because that's my baby girl. Listen, listen, you, you, oh Jesus, you are, when you are oppressed, that means you are being abused in any type of way on your job by your spouse. Any type of abuse, that means treated wrong. That means treated unjustly. When you are distressed, that means you are stressed out about life, about situations enslaving you in bondage and it and oppression also means that you are in a place where you are helpless watch this he said but i came to give you help i came to set you free he says i am the answer watch this isaiah 54 14 through 17 oh this is gonna be good today isaiah 54 14 through 17 in right, listen to this, and I had to get this out. I, I normally use NIV or Messenger, but I just like the way it read better in the King James. You know, sometimes the way the King James read, you just do it, give the scripture more power to me. So this is the King James version, version, Isaiah 54, 14 through 17. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Oh God, in righteousness shalt thou be established thou shalt be far from oppression and i'm gonna say okay holy spirit i'm trying to read this and the holy spirit is still saying talk talk listen i don't care what lifestyle your kid oh jesus i don't care what even type of lifestyle your child is in if god can speak through a donkey <laughs> your answer could be in the in the mouth of your wayward child your answer could be in the mouth of your child that's living a lifestyle that you don't approve of. Your answer could be in your child and they're not even in school yet. Your answer could be in a... Back to the scripture. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Isaiah 54, 14 through 17. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror. For it shall not come, here we go again, it shall not come near you. Watch this, 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not, it won't be by me, says God. Whoever shall gather together, who, who, whosoever shall gather together against you, oh, they gonna fall for my sake. Mm, God, they gonna fall for my sake. Listen, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Uh oh, refiner's fire. Here we go. And that bringeth forth the instrument from his work. And I have created, and I have created the waster to destroy. Mm, God, watch this. No, we, we love this one. Here we go. We love this one. No weapon, my God, that is formed against you shall prosper. Why? Here we go. And every tongue, mm, God, and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, I'm gonna condemn them. I mean, God said, I'm gonna shut them down. When they put their mouth, okay. I Y'all, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> when they put their mouth on you, he said, I'm going I'm to deal with them. I got you. Don't worry about it. Listen, then it says, this is the heritage. Listen to who it's for. Because everybody quote, no weapon formed against me have, shall prosper. But baby, baby, that word may not even be for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sheila Tavern, why this going to bless you? Everybody quote that, honey. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. They were singing the song. No weapon formed. Oh, they were just singing it. God say, I ain't talking to them. That ain't for everybody. <laughs> oh, God, I love you this morning. Watch this. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is for me. He said, that's who that, he said, that's who I'm talking to. Oh, God. He said, that ain't for everybody. Listen, it says, it says, in, in righteousness, you shall be established. You shall not fear. Whoever get, when, when they get together, Mm, God, when they all get together and start talking about you, <laughs> when they gather together in their little meetings and they want to discuss you, 
Tiara, watch this. When they gather together at the little family meetings before you get there, and they want to discuss you. Mm, God. He said, I'm going to deal with them. He said, I'm going to make them fall. He said, in fact, oh God, here we go. He said, the ditch that they digging for you, they're going to fall in it themselves. Oh God. You better be careful what you say about God's chosen. You better be careful what you say about God's remnant. Because he will deal with you harshly. He said, don't you put your mouth on my children. I don't care if it's in the work. I don't care if it's in the home. I don't care if it's in the job. He said, don't you put, even in the church, don't you put, <laughs> don't you put your mouth on my servants, on my chosen. Listen, I have been in so many situations. And do you know, okay, mm, God, do you know? That there are some people that when you tap into this realm of God in prayer, he will allow you to hear what they saying about you. Mm. Not only would he allow you to hear it, he'll let you see all kind of disorder. And he'll say, don't you open your mouth. Our problem is, <laughs> Karen, watch this. Our problem is this. He show us and we say, oh yeah, bet, I'm gonna deal with that. God said, I didn't show you. For you to deal with it. I showed you. So you know how to conduct yourself around them. I showed you. So you would know how to grin. And keep going. And keep moving. And let me fight. Watch this. Oh I'm going to deal with the number 23 too. I'm, a, I, I'm My mind is like racing. I, I'm going to deal with the number 23 too. Because that deal. i tell you tonight. Listen. So, <laughs> listen. so he's saying. I'll reveal to you those that's gathering together against you. He said I'll turn around. And make them. I'm going to make your enemies watch you eat. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, they putting their mouth on you. He said, I'm going to make them sit right there and make and, and watch me bless you. He said, I'm going to make them sit right there and make them regret every word they ever said about you. He said, I'm, he said and it's going to be so. Well, listen, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What is he saying? In their presence. That means no matter what they do, they're going to see what I, they're going to see how I bless you. He said, it may pop up on Facebook. And they're going to be like, huh? Somebody going to just tell them about it. And they're going to be like, huh? I don't even fool with her no more. But God said, I'm going to make them see. Ooh. He said, I'm going to make them see me feed you. Meaning, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And I'm going to make them watch you eat. Okay. Let, I'm going back here. He said, no matter what. No matter how hard they try to deny you. He said, I'm going to make them. He said, I'm going to bless you right in their face. Woo, Jesus, Jesus, watch this. So it says, in righteousness, you're going to be established. That means settled. That means permanent. He said, and you won't have fear. He said, even the people that put their mouth on you, he said, they're going to fall. Watch this. He says, I promise. Listen, God promises those who are afflicted, those who are tossed, those are who are in distress. He said, I'm going to protect you. He said, even though they're talking about you, he said, I'm going to protect you. Even though they, he said, no harm ain't going to come to you. But I'm going to protect you. Watch this. It says, it says, no, then it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Here we go. Why everything keep, the weapon got to be formed. You going to get the victory, but God going to get the glory. So a weapon, it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The weapon going to be formed. It just won't work. Oh God. <laughs> Drop it in the chat. It just won't work. The weapon will be formed. Hell gonna come. They gonna lie on you. They gonna reject you. They gonna talk about you. All that is gonna happen. But it won't work. Oh God, Wendy, listen. It won't work. It won't prosper. It won't grow. It won't do nothing. Watch this. In fact, God says, I'm allowing the I'm allowing the weapon. Listen. I'm allowing the weapon to be formed so that I can get the glory. I'm allowing the weapon to be formed so I can make them watch you eat. He said, listen, <laughs> y'all, it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The sovereign God who created the blacksmith, watch this, who created the spoiler to destroy, also has the power to protect you. What is that saying? I'm going to read it again. The sovereign God, that means he's sovereign. He does what he want to, how he want to, when he want to. And he use whatever he want and whoever he want. 
to get his cop to get whatever his whatever he need to be done accomplished. Watch this. It says he is the same God who created the blacksmith. Y'all know my favorite scripture in Malachi is he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap, meaning he watch this. He creates the fire. This is what blacksmiths do. He creates the fire, puts you in the fire, controls the heat so that everything in you that's not like him will come out, rise to the top. He scrapes it off, put you back in the fire, and he keeps this process going until you come forth as pure gold. The weapons are formed so you can go in the fire. God, y'all in trouble tonight. I feel this thing, and I got so much to do today. I got to do my hair. I got a whole lot I got to do. But listen, I feel the power of God like I can't even explain it. He's going to stick you in the fire. He controls the heat. He know how hot to get. He knows how much I can bear. Absolutely. So that means he know how hot to let that fire get. Baby, if you went through it, he said you can bear it. Jesus, watch this. Mm, I don't know who that's for. If you're going through it, he said you can bear it. Because if you couldn't, I wouldn't allow you to go through it. He said, I control everything. He said, I even control what you what you're going through. Listen, he says, I'm going to put you in this fire. I know, I know just, I control the heat of the fire. I control the temperature. I am the blacksmith. <laughs> I am the blacksmith. I'm going to stick you in the fire. I'm going to let it get so hot. Then I'm going I'm to pull it. I'm going to pull you out. Then I'm going to scrape everything. So every time, oh Jesus. So every time the fire gets hot and when everything in you rise up to the top, he said, I'm going to scrape that stuff off. Then I'm going to stick you back in the fire and I'm going to keep the process going until you come forth as pure gold. How, what causes me to go in the fire? The weapons that are formed allow me to go in the fire, but they're not going to prosper because I'm going to pull you out every time. Okay. Let, 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 let me. He said, I control that fire. He said, I even control the, the spoiler. To, he said, I even created the spoiler to destroy the weapons. Ooh. Do y'all hear Holy Spirit today? He says, I do all that and I can still protect you. Listen. It says, I promise that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Whatever weapon is raised against God's people is destined, my oh God, to be destroyed. He said, every weapon that is formed against my people, he said, it's going to be destroyed. That, that ain't even, I keep telling you, God operates in facts, not opinion. It ain't about what we think. God, do you think you can handle that? Can I part, didn't I part a Red Sea? Okay. God will ultimately even protect his people. Watch this. He going to protect you. Listen to this from criticism. Mm, God, he going to protect you from criticism. He going to even protect you against every tongue that rises against you in judgment. He said, not only, he said, not only am I going to protect you, Brenda, you, Wendy, you, Isha, you, Sheila, you, he said, even, even though I'm going to protect all 40 of y'all, he said, I'm going to protect you. And at the same time, I'm going to condemn them. Ooh, Jesus. I keep y'all when I be saying I'm his girl, understand what I'm saying is, baby, don't play with me. Don't, don't, don't do it. Help do yourself a favor. Don't mess with me. Cause when I tell you, God will kill you fooling with me. I believe that I've seen it happen. I've seen people. Listen, y'all don't know my testimony. Some of them on here would tell you. I have seen people talk about me like a dog. <clears throat> Call me holier than thou. Oh, honey, she's so self. She, she, she's so, all she talk about is praying. All she talk about is fasting. All she, and laugh. Mocking. Mm, God. Mocking me. And God say, oh, that's what we're doing now. So you actually coming up against what I called her to do? So technically, uh-oh, <clears throat> watch this, Wendy. So technically, you ain't, you ain't mocking her. You mocking me. Because she only doing what I sent her to do. Uh-oh. Watch this. So she only sent. So she's only doing what I sent her to do. And you want to talk about how much she prayed? You want to talk about? Oh, she started a ministry. Oh, she doing it. You want to talk about that? He says. So really, what you doing is you talking about me? Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. I'm telling y'all. Some of y'all in y'all feelings because they talking about you. I, if I were you, I'd be sitting back laughing and say, "Boy, God about to tear them up. Mm. God about to deal with them." Keep gathering around talking about me if you want to. Because y'all got, un if you understood how God really feel about you, you wouldn't even, you, listen, touch not. Y'all drop that in the chat. Drop that in the chat. Touch not. And watch this. And we always want to say that mean touch. It said, the scripture says, 
touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Who is the anointed of God? Those he had poured his anointing out on. But we want to just say it for the prophets. Uh-uh, baby, that's for all 40 of y'all this morning. If you call yourself, I am the anointed of God, meaning God has smeared me with his oil, meaning that God used me for his glory, meaning God has empowered me to do a certain thing, you better keep your mouth off me. Listen, y'all, that don't, okay, Holy Spirit. He said, stop downplaying who you are to me. Oh, Jesus. Listen, listen. It says no weapon that is formed against you shall, shall prosper. He says in every tongue, everybody that put their mouth on you. Watch this, angel. Everybody that put their mouth on you. He said, I'm going to condemn them. Whoa, whoa. And it says the Lord will not allow the weapon formed against his servants to prosper. Watch this. Sometimes this means the Lord takes the weapon out of. Whoop, oh, God. Oh, God. Help me. Y'all going to lose it on this one. <laughs> Kathy, y'all about to lose it on this one. Sometimes the Lord will take the weapon out of the hand of the enemy. Whatever you're trying to use against my servants, I'm going to snatch it out your hand and I'm going to use it against you. He said, I will make your enemies. He said, I will make your enemies turn on themselves. He said, I will cause confusion in the enemy's camp. Watch this. Those people that gathered around to talk about you. He said, I'm going to make them turn on each other. He said, those people that gathered around to talk about you. He said, I'm going to cause confusion right there. He said, don't worry about it. He said, I'm going to deal with it. It says, it says, sometimes it means that God allows the weapon to strike, but brings a greater good out of it. And then the, out of it, then the pain of the immediate blow. In allowing this, God will not allow the weapon to prosper, but trans, watch this. He takes the weapon, <laughs> God, listen, he takes the weapon that they had in their hand and he transforms it to a sword for your victory. Oh God, he takes the weapon that they were trying to use for you, that they were trying to use against you, Missy. He take that same weapon and he take that same weapon and he turn it and he used it for your good. He turn that, he take that same weapon and turn it and, and it bless your entire life. That's why I tell people they want to talk about, listen, I love God this morning. They want to talk about, she always getting on there live. She always on there praying. She always on there talking. She always on there preaching. She always, baby, do you understand? Every time you say she and you tell people my name, you making my ministry grow. Thank you. I appreciate you. Keep talking about me. Put my name out there. <laughs> Listen, it's international, baby. It's kingdom, baby. Let them talk. Because watch this. The more they talk about you, watch this, watch this, Kiara, watch this, James. The more they talk about y'all, the more they say, oh, honey, they married now. So you can't tell them nothing. They think they all that, honey, because I remember when. And so they keep talking about your marriage. And don't you understand, the more they talk, people are saying, well, I wonder how Kiara and James making it work. Well, I wonder how Kiara and James seem so happy. And then they start following you. And next thing you know, he done birthed a marriage man. I ain't fooling with y'all this morning. Watch this. Watch this. It says, the tongue which rise against you. We want to talk about the, the, the mouth. The mouth. That little snake that come out your mouth. Listen, we're going to talk about the tongue. Remember, the Bible says no man can tame it. It takes God to tame your tongue. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. It takes God to tame your tongue. It says, the tongue which rises against you, it can hurt. When people talk about you, it's steam. We ain't numb. We ain't, we ain't um invincible. We ain't like, oh, well, you know, everybody talk about me and it don't even bother me. It should. Remember, Jesus asked his disciples, what do men say about me? He needed to know. <laughs> God, watch this. It says the tongue which rises against you, it can hurt. Watch this. Satan leaves no stone unturned against the church of God. He uses not, not just his hand, but what is often a sharper weapon. Watch this. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. He not only uses his hand to touch you, to physically touch you in your body, make you sick, all that stuff. He, he not only uses that, but what is an even greater weapon? It says what is even a sharper weapon is the tongue. Mm, God, <clears throat> watch this. Because when people start lying on you, you can't trace back to who was the main person that said it. And if you start trying to chase a lie, <laughs> you're going to be chasing all day. Well, she told this person and that person told that person. No, I ain't tell that person. I told this. You'll be all over the place trying to figure out where did the lie start so I can get to the root of the lie. It says a sharper weapon, even if somebody coming up here slapping you, is their tongue. What they say about you. Watch this. It says we can bear a physical hit sometimes, but we cannot endure an insult. 
when somebody try to listen, and I'm telling you, the, the hardest thing for me is when because I'm I'm pretty smart. Like I'm I'm pretty smart. I got it from my mama. I'm I'm pretty smart. Listen, and so because I'm smart, when people try to in, um say something stupid to me, like I'm dumb, I be looking at them like, so you insulting my intelligence right now? Like you you think I'm that slow? You you think I'm really? Or when somebody lied to me, I'm looking like. You do know God reveals stuff to me. You do know I'm a prophet. And you just sitting here telling me this. And I'm like, that is like the word, an uh, insult. Like you insulting my intelligence. Now I'm going to tell all y'all on here that's mothers. If somebody come up and tell you, oh, you ain't no good mother. That's an insult. When I done done all I can, I done raised these kids. I done gave up money, time, finances, gave up vacations. I fooled with these jokers. And you trying to tell me I ain't no good mother. Oh boy. Somebody trying to tell you, you ain't no good daddy. And you like as hard as I work. I'm pulling 70 hours a week and you're talking about I ain't no good provider? An insult. Listen, listen. That cuts harder than somebody coming up slapping you. Because guess what? Because it's in your mind now. You're going to keep replaying it. You're going to keep, I can't, you've been sitting there like, I can't believe they said that to me. I, that's like your child coming up and saying, you ain't raised me right. You ain't no good mama. And you thinking about what I done sacrificed for your tail? That's an insult. That, that, that cut harder. That, that cut sharper than them coming up slapping you. Because no matter what they say, you still going to be thinking, I remember that day she came in here and had the audacity to tell me I ain't no good mama. She had the nerve. He had the nerve. Listen, watch this. It says, because the tongue can cut sharper than somebody slapping you. There is a great power in the tongue. We can rise from a physical hit, but it is not as easy to recover from slander from when somebody attack your character. Listen, when they attack your character, that cut like a knife. When they insult you, that cut like a knife. Watch this. There are more. Oh, this is what I love. This is what I love. Watch this. We can rise from a physical hit, but we cannot so easily recover from slander or when they put their mouth on you. Yet, here we go. Yet, we can trust in the Lord's triumph. Watch this. The more they accuse you, the more they accuse you, the more God said they ain't guilty. <laughs> God. The more accusers, the more acquittals. The more accusers, the more acquittals. The more they accuse me, the more God says she ain't guilty. The more God come to my defense, the more God deal with them. It says, watch this. The more slander, the more honor. Oh God. So the enemy may slander you. Listen, the enemy may, may, may slander you as much as they please. Keep slandering me. Keep talking about me. Keep lying on me. Because it's bringing God going to bring me honor out of what you're saying. He going to take that weapon and everything you said about me, God going to reverse it and the world going to say it about you. And the world going to say it about you. That is why you got to be careful what you say about God's anointed, those that he have called, those that are his remnant, those that he are using for his glory. You got to be careful what you put, what you say about them. Sometimes it's best. Well, and this is the thing that get me because people bring me stuff all the time. Well, Dr. Three, they said that this, this, and I just think you need to know. This is, this is what get me. Dr. I just think you need to know what they are saying about you because I know you to be a woman. And then here come the tears. I know you to be a woman of God and you pray me and my family. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, what they say? And they'll tell me what they say. And I'm like, okay, well, can I ask you a question? Why were they so comfortable saying that around you? Ooh. And when they said that about me, what did you say? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Because if they were comfortable talking that much, talking that negative about me around you, that say something about you and our relationship. Mm, here we go. So they just sat up and they just talked about me like a dog. And what did you, did you, did you defend me? Did you, did you say anything? Or were you just like, okay, okay. Mm, mm. Y'all better watch them people. Y'all better watch them people that always bringing you stuff. Mm. Cause watch this. What I've learned is a hit dog go holler. <laughs> oh God, a hit dog go holler. You can post something on Facebook, ain't even thinking about nobody, and you just posted something random. God dropped in your spirit, and here they come. You're like, wait a minute, what? How did the Brenda Dawkins? You all in my in my mind this morning. How did the conversation start? They didn't change the conversation when you walked in. They just kept on talking. So it's some, some, something ain't right about this whole thing right here you're giving me. Watch this. It says, when God says, I'm going to deal with them, you got to understand 
that is not just a blanket statement. That's just not an opinion. That's just not what, what it sounded good in the Bible. So they wrote it. Mm -mm. You got to remember that God operates on facts. Listen, so it is a fact that I'm going to deal with them. It's a fact that I'm going to condemn them. He said, it's a fact that no weapon formed against you going to prosper. He said, that's a fact. Watch this. The Lord specifically says, this is the heritage of the servants. Here we go. This ain't for everybody. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, honey. I don't care what you're going to do, honey. God going to come to my defense. Okay, well, are you a servant? Because it says here, the Lord, the, it says here, it says specifically, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Hmm. Are you a servant of the Lord? Because if you're not, this don't apply to you. Uh-oh. Whoa-oh. If you're not a servant, they can keep talking about you. And they can talk about you and it will prosper. They can talk about you and it may cost you your job. They can talk about you and, and all this negative stuff can happen. Unless I am a servant of God. If I'm a servant of God, then it's, it's a whole different story, baby. It's a whole, if I, because I am a servant of God, you can talk about me. Yes, absolutely. Because guess what? Your mouth is elevating me. Your mouth is catapulting me into my destiny. Baby, keep talking. Because one thing I know is my daddy, God, he coming for you. And the more you talk about me, the more he said, yeah, I got to elevate her right in their face. Yeah, I got to promote her right in their face. Yeah, I, those that talked about her, that lied on her, watch this. What I'm going to do is that little job you got because you think you over her and you think because you, you in you in authority over her on that job. He said, I'm going to take your job, give it to her and put you in her position. Now who now who you got to answer? Y'all listen, listen. <laughs> he said, and that is a fact. He said, and that, drop that in the chat. Elevation, elevation, elevation. They mouth going to elevate you. Let them talk, baby. Let them talk. Don't. Jesus, do you understand that when Jesus walked the earth, did ministry, do you understand how many lies they told on him? Do you understand how much they rejected him? Do you understand how much they, 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 they talked about him and called him crazy? And then he got this crazy cousin, John, the back. they all crazy. Listen, <laughs> do you understand? Do you understand they did all that? Jesus heard it. Jesus asked the disciples, who do they say I am? So he knew all this. Watch this. So Jesus said, Jesus never went back and said, let me go chase down this lie. Let me go correct them. Mm -mm. Listen, you never chase down a lie. Let them think what they think. Ooh, because if you're chasing it down, you're not giving God time to do what he need to do. You're trying to fix it. He said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make your enemies watch you eat. He said, I... okay, listen, listen. He says, but this, when the weapons are formed, they will not prosper, but they will not prosper only against my servants. Mm, God, watch this. He says, it's for my servants and it's also for those whose righteousness, listen to this, it's also for those who, whose righteousness is from me, from me. He said, I gave them the righteousness and not from themselves. They didn't make themselves who they are. I did it. He said, this is who this for. Them people that I, that I made righteous. Them people that's in right standing with me. Them people that's on their face. Them people that serve me. He said, he said that's who I'm protecting. All y'all other folk quoting. He said, you just, you just blowing smoke in the wind. Watch this. It says, when a person understood, when a person understands that their righteousness is really from God, they are much more comfortable in letting the Lord protect them. Mm. When I understand that I'm only made right because of God, I'm only made righteous, not perfect, not per I'm going to say it again, not perfect, not perfect, not perfect. I'm only made righteous. That means in right standing with God by him. It ain't nothing that I've done that can deserve that. It's only through him. Watch this. To receive protection from your oppressors, you must be his servant. What is a servant? A servant is one who is, listen, all 45 of y'all this morning. A servant is one who is a devoted and helpful and helpful follower. They are humble before God and they are ready to act as soon as God nudged them to do something. Are you a servant? Mm. Are you humble before God? Are you submitted to God? Are you going to move as soon as he say move? Servants. That means I'm at your disposal, God. Whatever you need me to do, whatever you need me to say, I'm going to do it. That means whenever you tell me to move, I'm going to go. That means whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Are you a servant? Oh boy, rethink this thing. Listen, he said, this is for my servants. He said, he said, when I nudge them to do stuff, they do it. He says, he says, and then he said, that, and he said, not only that, he said, but my servants will even help meet the needs of other people. 
Listen, and when they do it, they ain't doing it to be recognized. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They will help other people. And when they do it, they're not trying to be recognized. They will help other people. Listen to these words. They will help other people and they're not doing it to be recognized. Meaning, I'm not going to help you. And they get on Facebook and say, honey, I just helped sister so-and-so. She needed help with it. I'm not telling nobody what I did. It's between me, you, and God. Are you a servant? Mm, God. Are you a servant? He says, you're doing it and you don't need recognition. Meaning if you come to me for something and I'm able to help you, I, my, my, my assignment, my, because I'm a servant, I ain't even talking about it. I ain't even mentioning it no more. You're going to bring it up to me and I'm like, say what? What you talking about? I helped you do what? On it? No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't need no recognition about what I did. I don't need no recognition about the seed I sowed. I don't need recon Servant. Listen, here we go. And he says, this is for, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, he said, he says, no weapon that's formed against my servants will prosper, but you got to be, he said, no, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And I'm going to shut down everybody to put their mouth on you. He said, but I'm only talking to my servants. I'm only talking to those who know that I have made righteous. Watch this. Make sure your righteousness is in God. That means acting always in a way that is consistent. Mm, God. My righteousness is in God. What does that mean? The way I act, the way I talk, it represents him. The way I act, the way I talk, it shows God's character. Mm. My righteousness is in him, meaning only God can make you righteous. When, when it says that God is making me righteous, I am in right standing with him. That means when you look at me, you should see him. When you look at me, you should see his characteristics. When I talk, you should, should hear him. Are you a servant? And are you in the righteousness of God? Can they look on you and see God? Or could, do they look at you and say, you go to church? Like, for real? Like, I ain't, huh? Or are they looking at you saying, it's, I knew it was something about you. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew it was something about you. That's what I'm talking about. When they say that, baby, you're on the right track. When they say that, you're on the right track. Because I knew you always think of things different. You always say it a different way. Yeah, baby, because I got these spiritual eyes now. Because I got this new heart, this new mind now. So I think different. I talk different. When they start saying that stuff, like, oh, you change. Baby, you're on the right track. Watch this. It says, when God is going, when God says, no weapon is formed against you, no, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue, I'm going to shut it down. He said, I'm talking to my servants and those who my righteousness reside in. That's the only people I'm talking to. He said, everybody else, he said, I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't even know you. Uh-oh. I don't even know you because you don't come in with me. You know, the only time I hear from you is when you want something. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. It's listen. So, and then also this week we were talking about the stages of rejection because this all did, because remember Jesus came to, to tell them that, that, that I am the one. I am the sitting one. I'm going to deal with your oppressors. All the people that's coming against you, I'm going to shut them down. I'm going to make their lies turn on them. He said, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. He said, he says, uh, even the weapons that they forming against you with poverty, with oppression, with stress, with, with anxiety. He said, I'm going to make it turn on them. And guess what they did? They rejected him. We don't want that. And we learned that the, the stages of rejection are denial, anger, bargaining, depression and then finally you just accept it listen and then one of the benefits of rejection one of the benefits of rejection the last one we talked about been talking about them all week rejection will make you reconsider your goal oh god rejection will make you reconsider your goal thank you holy spirit remember when i opened up and i said i was riding all down in gastonia looking for looking for um to rent a to rent a house my mindset was, watch this. <clears throat> My mindset was, well, I just need a bigger place. So I'm just going to get, I'm going to move back in, back, back in North Carolina because I was in South Carolina. I'm going to move back in North Carolina because my girl's tuition, I needed to be in state because I'm paying it by myself. So I don't need it to be out of state. And I got three in college, so I need to figure out something. So I said, I'm going to move back to North Carolina and I'll just rent a bigger house. Instead of apartment, I'll just rent a house. Right. Watch this. But my but God used my baby, Brittany. He used Brit to say mm -mm. that that's not. Why would you rent a house? Why would you rent a house when you always been a homeowner? Why would God take you out of renting one property to rent another property? That's not God. Listen, 
And so what happened really was, what, what happened really was my thought of this getting this um written this house was rejected. Ooh, listen to the Holy Spirit. It was rejected. How did I know it was rejected? Because when she because when Brittany began to speak prophetically, it rejected what I was wanting to do. Uh-oh. So we get mad. Listen. So we get mad when, when we got we got it all figured out in my mind. Oh, I'm gonna help y'all. Jesus, help me. I am gonna listen to this. We get mad when we got it all worked out in our mind. We know how, baby. I know how this thing right here gonna fold, unfold. I just gotta put save this amount of money here, and I gotta move these funds. I'm gonna take the cash off the credit card. Listen, I'm gonna take the cash off the credit card and put it with the other money, and then now, then I have enough to go get what I want. And then God sent a prophet like me to come and tell you. God told me to tell you that that don't make no sudden moves right now. Don't don't do nothing right now. Don't 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 don't. You about to make a purchase? God told me to tell you. I don't know who this is for. God told me to tell you don't 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 move no money off no credit card because now you're gonna have a bigger you're gonna have more interest to pay back. So in the end, you're really hurting yourself. God told me to tell you to just be still. Watch this. I just the prop the, the word the word of the Lord just rejected what you was about to do. Mm, God, because you about to rob Peter to pay you about to rob rob Peter to pay Paul. Mm. God told God and I'm the prophet and I'm telling you God said that don't make sense. God said just be still, be still for a minute because something coming. Be still for a minute because God said breakthrough coming. Don't move no money right now. You are gonna regret that later. God said don't purchase that right now. You are gonna regret that later. God said don't get it now. Interest rates about to drop. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. God said listen, I need you to be still. I need you to be still. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. And I reject your whole plan. Watch this. And you get mad at me, honey. I went to that service ship. That I don't already. I already had things lined up, and now she telling me to be still and just wait. You mad because I rejected what you wanted to do? Because God is saying, I got something coming down the road? Because God said, it's a check coming? If she would just be still and trust me, I'm going to pay it all off. If she, would just, if she would just be still and trust me, I got some money coming. It's some money tied up they owe you. Baby, don't, don't, put, don't do nothing with the credit cards. Hold on right now. Don't make no purchases. Hold on right now. Don't buy nothing. They owe you. It's coming. I'm, I'm about to give it back to you. I'm about to restore everything that the cake of worm and the palm of worm stole from you. I'm about to restore it. I'm about to give you beautiful ashes. Don't move right now. But you get mad at me. You reject. Oh, God. You reject. Oh, God. You reject the voice of the prophet. Watch this. And so you get mad. Then you start going through all the little steps of, of rejection. You deny it. She lying. Huh? That ain't from God. That ain't. You, you, you deny it. Then you get mad at me. I ain't going to no more. So now I sold a seed, honey. I, I wish I could get my seed back. Well, baby, if you sold a seed and you rejected the seed, you already dug it up out the ground. So your seed ain't going to prosper anyway. But anyway, and then you get mad. You, you get angry. And then you start bargaining. Well, maybe she was right because I have been waiting a long time and ain't nothing happened yet. Maybe I should have listened to her. Now you're bargaining with me. Now you're getting depressed because now you didn't listen to the voice of the prophet. And so now you're in trouble. And now the bill collector's coming. And I ain't get what I needed. And I still got to pay this credit card back with all this interest. And now, and you're mad. Then finally, you said, well, wait a minute. Maybe she was right. Because I know I be seeing people talking about the fruit of her ministry. So maybe she was right. God, I'm sorry. You, you accepted. The, oh, that, that was God. You accepted. Watch this. And it says, so now you need to go back and reconsider. <laughs> reconsider your goal. What is it what God was trying to get you to do in the first place? Did he? And I keep telling y'all. I keep telling y'all. Y'all have heard me testify of this so many times. Whenever God is going to perform a miracle, listen to this. Oh, God, I, something just hit me right here in my heart. I don't know who this is for. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Because you about to make a move and it's not the right move. Wait, 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 I say on the Lord. Listen, he says, he says, he says, because when I'm about to perform a miracle, he says, I need all doors to be shut. He said, when I'm about to perform a miracle, when you write that thing down on paper, it ain't going to make sense to you and nobody else. He said, that is a miracle. He said, if you can figure it out, he said, if you can make it work, if you can move, pull money off this credit card and pull money off that credit card, now all of them maxed out. So guess what? Now that all your credit cards is maxed out, your credit score done went down. Ooh. So guess what? Now, whatever you was trying to get, you can't get because now your credit score is all jacked up. Reconsider. Watch this. <laughs> He says, he says, oh God, I love you this morning. He says, when I am performing a miracle for you, he said, it ain't going to make sense to you. It ain't going to make sense to nobody else. Do you know everything that God has done in my life? 
listen to this. When I write it down on paper, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I only make this amount of money. How in the world did they, how in the world did they approve me for a house, single woman, single parent? How they approve me for a house that's almost a half a million dollars? I'm just a teacher. I'm just, God said, it ain't supposed to make sense to you. He said, it's the arithmetic. I don't know who this is for. It is the arithmetic of God. His math is some crazy stuff. His math don't make sense to us. What kind of God can take away to add? Oh, God. <clears throat> what kind of God has to, has to, listen, what kind of God would take something from you to make you, to, to what, what, kind, what type of God would take from you to make you bigger? What type of God would take something from you and say, this is going to make you better in the end? What type of God? Okay. My grandmother would say this. What kind of God is this? And now I understand when she would say that. What kind of God is this that would take a teacher? A sick, listen, what type of God would allow you to be married? Listen, married for 22 years. Listen to this. Married for 22 years. Get divorced. And you, got, and you got more income now than the two of y'all had together and you a teacher? What kind of God is this? What kind of God will put you in a house that's, uh, that's over $400,000 and you just a teacher? What kind of God will tell you, now is the time, go buy this property and gas on you and I'm gonna let you stay in it for two years, then I'm gonna sell it and I'm gonna let you walk away with over $100,000 in your pocket? What type of God is this? The arithmetic of God. Listen, y'all got to understand this morning. We serve a mighty God. He said, I got you. He said, I'm going to take away that. Drop this in the chat. I'm going to take away the ad. I don't know who this is for, but you better not, whatever you about to do, that 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 financial move that you can, you been saying, God, should I, should I, should I? I'm telling you now, no. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. No, if this is for you, say, Dr. Three, that's for me, because I'm going to pray for you later. Listen. If you're about to make some type of move, a major move, listen, and you're going to have to move money from here, from there, borrow and do all this, because watch this. Now is not the time. The prophetic word that came on Monday, I told y'all something coming is bad. Something coming is bad. If you didn't see that prophetic um, prayer call on Monday, you need to go find it. You need to go find it. God says right now, he said, I'm telling you, don't start borrowing money. Don't start going in your reserves. Don't start going to your 401k. Don't start pulling money from other places. He said, let everything sit. He said, be still. Now is not the time. Now, 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 now is not the time. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, because he said, because I'm giving you warning of how to prepare. I'm giving you warning saying I'm going to protect you. He said, but I'm also telling you, he said, everything that, everything that they owe you, because there's some people that done you dirt. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> it's some people that owe you money right now and smiling in your face. It's some people that owe you money right now and they know you owe you and they, watch, and they have no intention of paying you back. But God said, I'm going to make them spit it up. I don't know who that's for. <laughs> he said, they owe you. He said, and then guess what? It's payback is coming. Payback is coming. Payback is coming. Listen, let us pray because I can be on here all day. I can be on here all day and I got to get ready for tonight. I have so much I need to do today. Listen, Father God, we magnify you. We exalt your great and your mighty name. We thank you, oh God, for this time of impartation. We thank you for this time to sit at your feet. We thank you, oh God, for renewing, for refreshing, for reviving us again. We thank you, oh God, for being a God that protects us. You protect us from everything. You protect us from danger seen and unseen. God, you protect us from what we don't even know is coming. God, you protect us even while we sleep. God, and for that, we want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for being the almighty God. Thank you, God, for being the all-sufficient one. Thank you for being the sovereign God. We thank you, God, for even putting us in the fire and controlling how hot it gets. We thank you, oh God, for protecting us against the tongues, against the naysayers that are rising up against us, for protecting us, God, against every false accuser. We thank you, oh God, for protecting us from every weapon that is formed. And we thank you, God, for allowing the weapons that are formed to turn on themselves, for allowing how the people that talk about us, lie about us, gather together against us for them causing, for you causing confusion in their camp amongst them. God, but we thank you this morning for giving us enough sense, for giving us enough discernment to know how to handle the talkers. Well, God, 
We understand it. We decree and declare we're going to handle it different now. We decree and declare we're going to walk it out differently now. We're going to represent you in this earth. We are your service. We are your righteousness. We thank you, oh God, for making us your righteousness, for making us in right standing. We thank you, oh God, for us being able to show your characteristics to the world. We thank you, oh God, for calling us your servants. So because we are your servants and because we are in the righteousness of you, you protect us from everything. You protect us from the lies. You protect us from the naysayers. You are our protector. You are our buckler and our shield, oh God. You are everything to us, oh God. We thank you for Psalm 91. No harm coming nigh thee. We thank you for dealing with the pestilence of the air, the arrows that fly at night. We thank you, oh God, for protection. We thank you for protecting us, oh God. We thank you for protecting us in every area of our lives, God. We thank you, God, because you are everything. We thank you, oh God, for giving us just one more opportunity to say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for giving us one more opportunity just to sit at your feet and to hear what you're saying to us. We thank you for this week and this time of prayer, God, for how you have shown us how to handle rejection. We're going to handle it just like you did, Daddy. And we thank you for that. Listen, if you want to sow, the information is on the bottom of the screen. If you want to sow, you can you can um, go, I think it's like Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. If you want to sow into this word, I mean, if this word has blessed you, if this word has given you another way to look at things, if this word has, has helped you in any way, you may sow into the word. When I sow into the word, that is saying to God, my seed is in the ground. And now I need you to do everything that that, that that woman that was on there screaming and hollering about at six o'clock on, on the 23rd. I need you to do everything that she said. I'm believing you to do it. My seed is in the ground. I stand on that word. That is why you sow. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. I want you to meet me on tonight. Let me see. I want you to meet me on tonight at 7 p.m. at 604 Doug May's place. 7 p.m. 604 Doug May's place. Listen, God has already given us the word for tonight. He says new, new, new. I'm pouring out new hearts, new mind, new refreshings, new anointings. He said, I'm giving out, he said, I'm pouring out new tonight. But we're also going to deal with the, the last part of this. To Jesus came, to, he went back to Nazareth. The last thing he said is, I'm going to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Oh God, y'all know this. I'm about, we're going to walk heavy tonight. Listen. We're going to walk heavy tonight. He's saying, watch this. I'm going to tell you about proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. That means this is the year of Jubilee. The year ain't over yet. God's timing is not our timing. Listen, I want to pray with you tonight. I gave you the word of the Lord concerning the school districts, the public schools. If you didn't hear that, go back to the beginning so you can hear that. This is our last gathering until August 11th. August 11th. We would, we're going to gather tonight. Then we won't be back again until August 11th. I need you to be there tonight. I need you to come excited. I need you to come expecting. I've been on the phone with the sound man at five o'clock this morning. He said, my doctor, what are you doing? I said, I just, I just needed to give you one more song. <laughs> Listen, my team, no, I'm just, I'm just a whole lot. I'm a whole lot. Listen, because my mind is constantly on how to make things better for the kingdom, how to make it easier for the kingdom, how, how to do it the way God really wanted it done. So I'm, I'm real particularly about everything, everything Listen, when it comes to doing God's work. So listen, I love you. I love you. If you want to sow the information on the screen, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Listen, I will see you tonight at 7 p.m. Saints, pray me through, pray me through, pray me through, because I'm just a whole lot right now. Just pray me through. Listen, I love you, Wendy. I did talk to your daughter, so we're going to have a high time. August 11th, I am excited about her ministry. Listen, I want you to meet me tonight at 7 p.m. Bring your family. Do not come alone. It's about to be uh, uh, oh, we're about to sit under an open heaven. God is about to do an outpouring. I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I will see you tonight at 7 p.m. God bless you. Have a good day on purpose. <laughs>